Hey guys, welcome to Juicy Tea, where I read out the best stories on Reddit so you don't have to. The funny, shocking, and satisfyingly juicy. I did this story a while ago. If you want to skip to the update, the timestamp is in the description. Am I the a-hole for getting engaged to my ex-husband's new girlfriend's ex-husband? Posted by a throwaway account. I, 49 female, and my ex-husband, 50 male, let's call him Kevin, got divorced. The straw that broke the camel's back was when I came home with a present for him for our anniversary, and he accused me of getting it from whoever I was sleeping with and threw it away. He didn't even open the present, which was a Rolex watch that he'd looked at multiple times and expressed that he liked. I talked to a divorce attorney after this and we filed within a month and he moved out. I told my attorney about this and he wanted to know where he moved out as Kevin wouldn't list his new address. It was revealed that he moved in with his new girlfriend, 50 female, let's call her Jenny. I actually knew Jenny as our oldest kids have been in the same class since pre-K. I also knew that Jenny and her husband, 52 male, let's call him Terry, just got divorced right before us too. It took a little over a year to finalize the divorce since Kevin couldn't agree to any of the terms. A few weeks after the divorce, Kevin and Jenny went public with their relationship on a luxury beach trip. Terry sent me a friend request that I quickly accepted. I'll admit, at this moment I was being shallow because he's undeniably attractive. He's 6 foot 3, tanned from working outside on his farm and fit. And he messaged me right after, just asking if I'd seen the post and blah blah blah. The conversation quickly turned into making plans to get dinner and drinks one night. It was Kevin's first weekend with the kids, so Terry and I went out. It sounds sappy, but in that moment, I knew this could be something. It felt natural talking to him, like I didn't have to walk on eggshells or tiptoe around things. He was the first person who actually looked to me when I was talking, and we agreed on almost everything. After we left, I invited him over, and we had a few more drinks and watched a sappy love movie, and had so much fun making fun of how unrealistic it was. Somehow, we finished a bowl and a half of wine, so I invited him to stay the night. He offered to sleep on the couch, but I told him he could sleep in the bed since I wasn't sleeping well because I wasn't used to sleeping alone. The next morning, I made us breakfast and we agreed we should do this another time, and that it was great. As we were eating, Kevin texted me that he was down the road to drop the kids off. Terry rushed to get dressed and left. It felt terrible making him leave like that. And of course, the first thing Kevin asked was if he'd seen Terry's truck coming down our road. I told him nope, and he dropped the kids off and left. That was four years ago, and shortly after that, Terry admitted to me that he wanted a relationship, and I said yes. We kept it private all this time because it's really no one's business to know, as long as we were happy together. We just celebrated our fourth anniversary, and beginning in November, Terry started to hint that he wanted to propose and wanted me to move to his farm in another town since he lived an hour and a half away. He planned a surprise dinner with all our friends to propose to me. I couldn't believe he really did all this for me. All our friends were incredibly supportive and agreed that we seemed happy together and deserved to be happy with each other. The next day, I made a post that we were engaged. This was the first post about Terry and I on each other's pages. Right after the post, we started getting calls, texts, and Facebook messages from Jenny's family and Kevin's family. And Jenny sent a long message to Terry. She couldn't believe we would do this and didn't check with them first. And how insensitive it was to get engaged when we knew her and Kevin were on a break because of the fighting. He ignored all her messages until we both got messages from my family saying we were terrible people for getting engaged in spite of Jenny and Kevin and how they no longer wanted to see my kids and wouldn't be attending the wedding. Terry helped me sell my house since he also works for a real estate company. We packed up all my stuff, sold all the furniture and I moved into Terry's house. I left my job and was actually able to get a job at his company as a secretary. He has two sons who treat me very well. They don't call me their mum, but I don't expect them to either. But they do tell people that I'm their stepmom. And for Christmas, they surprise me with a basketball mum t-shirt with their names and numbers. I couldn't stop crying after seeing it because it was so meaningful to me to see how they considered me their stepmom. Kevin had the kids for Christmas and was supposed to begin the normal split custody in January. But since January, the kids have said they don't want to see me. Kevin said he's talking to an attorney to change our custody schedule and that he wants full custody. I'm finally happy with someone that loves me, planning a very small wedding, with only friends and family that were supportive of us and our relationship. 
I have two stepsons that love me, but I feel so empty without my kids. I did take them to meet Terry, and he's been to dinner with us many times. He treated them like his own, and he never got onto them or was mean to them. I feel so conflicted about what to do. My kids won't even talk to me over the phone and refuse to see me. So, am I the a-hole for getting engaged to Terry? Edit. My kids have always known Terry and were introduced to him a year and a half after we started dating. They had no problem with us being together and knew about the engagement as Terry took them to pick out the ring. It's not like he's a total stranger to them as they've been around him multiple times and been to his house. Mini update. I was able to talk to my usual therapist about a session next week to help the kids talk and maybe help them understand the truth. Down in the comments, Moonlover318 says, I have a feeling that the dad convinced the kids that the mum was having an affair. Rainbow Bell says, Sounds like ex-hubby was the one cheating, considering how fast he moved on. I have to agree, it's super suspicious how fast he moved on and how he thought that she was cheating on him. It's crazy how everyone's against Terry and OP getting engaged four years later. But somehow, we're okay with her husband and Jenny getting together right after they separated. I'm not sure how much of an update this is, but here we go. To start, I'm sure he and Jenny had an affair when we're still married, but I don't really care to know. I don't let them waste any of my energy, worrying about them and what they do, or did. I probably could have worded the end of my post better. Terry isn't a stranger that I just pulled off the street and got engaged to. My kids have always known Terry, as his kids are the same age and played the same sports. I told them I was dating someone after a year and a half and introduced them to him shortly after. They've been to dinner with Terry and me, been with me when Terry came over, and been to Terry's house where he lives. He's a very busy, hardworking man, so we didn't get to spend very much time together, where I live or with my kids, so I would usually spend time at his house. But I never skip time with my kids to see him. Terry's a farmer, land real estate agent, owns his own business, and is a volunteer firefighter, so that's why I decided to move there instead of the other way around. He has roots in his area, while I was free to move. I did tell my kids, prior to the move and engagement, that I'd like to move there one day. They did tell me that they weren't really interested in moving there, as they liked their school and didn't want to switch. I was fine with that, and told them if I did, I'd still like them to stay, if it's for a weekend or when they're on break. Terry also took all three of my boys and his two to pick out my ring, so it wasn't a shock to any of them. He asked all three of my kids, individually, if they were fine with it before he even proposed. I was also asked about if they could come to his house, and yes, they could. Terry has a very nice ranch house he built himself, with five full bedrooms and three empty finished rooms in the basement that could be used as bedrooms. They've already stayed there too, before the engagement, and had no problems. Terry also has a room that he calls his office that he offered to clear out to make room for another upstairs bedroom so one kid didn't have to sleep downstairs if all five were staying at his house so they could all have their own rooms and privacy. I didn't want to act like I was hiding my relationship with Terry but we wanted to take things slow and not rush, hence why we didn't post on social media or tell our exes. Obviously, our friends knew about us. You can only tell people you're just friends for so long before they catch on. But we only told very, very close friends, who wouldn't gossip and tell everyone. And lastly, the question about my job. Yes, I went from a director of a department to a secretary. A secretary making just under what I made as a director. You would all be very surprised what small town local business secretaries make. I'm a secretary slash accountant for the land real estate company, as well as for Terry's business and his farm. I go to work with him at 2.30am and don't leave until he does at 9pm and still have farm chores after. So, for everyone degrading my career, I work my butt off. You work from 2.30am to 9pm, then chores after, and you have kids? Gee, OP, you're making us all look bad. Now, on to the update. After that post and the advice, I call my lawyer, who agreed he can't keep the kids from me, and he's definitely doing something to make them flip like that. He did say we could go to court, but I told him I want to try and resolve it without court first. I'm not ashamed of it, and I'll admit, I see a therapist for my own health. I talked to her about getting a session with just my kids, and she agreed. I called Kevin after to say I want to have a talk with only the boys, and he could drop them off, but he could not attend. The therapist was finally able to get them to open up. You Reddit detectives were correct. 
he changed the story to say that Terry and I had an affair for years before we got a divorce. He even tried to tell the youngest that Terry could be his dad because I was cheating then. This isn't true. I never cheated on Kevin in our entire relationship. I was able to tell the kids the full truth and I felt like a 50 pound weight was lifted off my chest. After, I'd never been happier to hug all three of them. I made sure to express how much we miss them and are happy to have them home. And completely unexpected, all three gave Terry a hug. Terry isn't one to cry, but the second they hugged him, I saw his eyes water up and I knew I was making the right decision and picked someone who loved these boys as much as I do. They spent the weekend with us and I was able to tell the older two the full story about Kevin and Jenny, how the marriage fell apart and once again invited them to live with us. They both said they actually wanted to, but since Kevin had fed them lies, they hadn't wanted to be around us. They get our school in May and are planning on moving in with us for the summer. This will hopefully be a good opportunity for them to bond with Terry's kids and their friends. I won't push them to move here as it's their own choice, but deep down, I really hope they do. I think going to a smaller school and living in a smaller town will be better for them than living in a city. I told my youngest a more watered down version of events. I did make sure to tell him that Kevin is his real dad and what he told him about Terry isn't true. He seemed to understand. So, for the moment, Kevin is fine with the boys moving in here for the summer. All three of them asked him instead of me, and I think that helped a lot, showing him that it was their decision, not mine. To say I'm excited is an understatement. I'm over the moon with how well this has worked out. I've talked with my lawyer and he said the older two are able to decide where they'll go, but Kevin and I will have to come to an agreement for our youngest. I don't want full custody as I think kids need their father in their lives, but my lawyer is urging me to fight for full custody. With travel sports signing up, Kevin and I were able to agree on a temporary agreement of me getting the kids on the weekends that they have a game. I'll pick them up on the Friday, go to the game on the Saturday and bring them home on Sunday. But we have been sorting out a more permanent agreement with the lawyers. They were able to agree with the older two having a decision as long as they didn't miss anything important such as school. Turns out Kevin also told the kids that Terry was still dependent on drugs. To make a long story short, about two years ago, Terry had been having neck problems and saw a chiropractor for the first time in his life. That chiropractor broke his neck in four places, resulting in him needing two surgeries and becoming addicted to painkillers. He was on them for a year and it took him another six months to get off, but he's been clean since. Kevin also said that Terry and I wanted to take them away and never let them see their other family. He also tried to accuse me of being addicted to drugs. I get nauseous from taking painkillers, so I refuse to take any, even after a mastectomy and reconstruction surgery. I also found out that Jenny was calling them my boys and wanting them to take her last name. That's still Terry's because she refused to change it after the divorce. So there's still lots we don't know, but hopefully will one day. I'm glad there's a happy ending after all of this, but Opie's lawyer's right. The dad is being toxic and messing with the kids' heads, and he doesn't seem to care how it's impacting his kids as long as he hurts OP. I get wanting them to have a relationship with their dad, but can he really be trusted? If you like this video, please let me know and subscribe for more juicy tea.